and welcome back. I'm Chris McLeod with Edmonton Global, joining you here live from the Canadian Hydrogen Convention and inside the Edmonton Region Hydrogen Hub exhibit. Uh, if you haven't come down yet, please do if you happen to be in the region. Uh, this is the largest hydrogen show in North America. Uh, and it, as well, it's, uh, we've been told it's the largest conference to happen in Canada since the beginning of the pandemic. So there's a ton on the go here. Uh, and the next session, actually, we've had a lot of people that are interested in this. It's a conversation with Eric Guter with, with Air Products. Uh, and Air Products, uh, about a year ago, announced a massive project here in the Edmonton metropolitan region. They're building the world's largest net zero hydrogen facility right here in our region. Uh, it's going to have both gas and liquid hydrogen, and it's just an absolute game changer, not just for here, but the world over. So Eric, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much, Chris. Great to be here. Yeah. I'm thrilled to be back in Edmonton after a brief three-year hiatus. Oh, wonderful. So you were here before? I used to spend a lot of time in the uh, Edmonton region. I, at one time, had responsibility for all of our hydrogen production assets across Canada. So I spent a lot of time by there, a lot of fond memories, and really thrilled to be back. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we, we talk a lot about this, you know, this huge project that Air Products has on the go. You know, what's next? But you already have a, a very large <laughs> presence here to begin with. We do. We have a, a number of uh, facilities in the region, all connected via pipeline. We've been serving the industrial heartland since about 2008 uh, and uh, supplying all of the industrial customers. So this is just a natural extension and transition uh, and progression of our business uh, today. So uh, in addition to this project, we have projects uh, coming up all around the globe that we have, have announced and are underway. Wow. So again, like, we, we know Air Products well. We're, we're huge fans of the work you're doing. Uh, others who are watching may not know Air Products as much. Can you give us just a bit of a sense of you know, Air Products as a company and, and what you're playing in? You bet. So we've been in business for about 80 years. We're a global industrial gas company. Uh, we produce things like oxygen, nitrogen, and most significantly hydrogen all around the world. So we've been doing that at world scale all around the world with hundreds of miles of dedicated hydrogen pipelines. And now as uh, the world rushes forward to decarbonize, Hydrogen is a big component of that decarbonization effort. And so it's just a natural extension of our business. We've been producing hydrogen and distributing and delivering that to our customers for over 60 years. Uh, we've been in hydrogen mobility applications for over 30 years. And so for us, this is just what we've been doing. And, and the time now is great uh, because this is where the future is. This is where uh, the public wants to go in terms of decarbonization. And we're yeah. happy to be ready to offer these environmental solutions. Yeah. And, and I mean, meeting our climate objectives by, by 2050 or, or earlier, it's a massive global challenge. And there's, there's probably nobody better placed in the world to help solve this than Air Products. And, you know, just the fact that you're launching into this net zero project and the first one in the world here is a real testament to how seriously the company's taking the climate challenge. A absolutely. Uh, we have uh, over $16 billion of announced projects underway. Wow. All associated with decarbonized hydrogen all around the globe. So uh, I've been doing this for 27 years. I kind of get a chuckle at home because for the first 25 years of my career, my family had no idea what I did because it was always in hydrogen and now all of a sudden they get it. Yeah, from, from uh, maybe not, not that known to now like a global superhero, you know, helping <laughs> save the planet. That's, that's fantastic. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about the project you've got going here. Um, you know, I, I know you're hoping to get, you know, groundbreaking relatively soon. Can you give people a sense of just the scale of what you're actually going to build here in the Edmonton region? Yeah, so this is a, just another world-scale hydrogen production facility. Slight redesign to allow us to achieve over 95% carbon capture. So I think of these facilities as almost carbon processing facilities, leveraging Alberta's rich natural gas supply. Uh, we process that, remove that carbon, put it right back underground where it came from, and we can add that into our system to give us broad distribution capabilities. In addition to that, as you pointed out, we have liquefaction, uh, so that gives us liquid hydrogen, which is very important for uh, merchant customers and especially mobility customers because you need energy density when you move this hydrogen around. You need supply chain resiliency, and that's what liquid hydrogen really does. And we're also going to make uh, decarbonized power with that hydrogen. So instead of using oh, wow. natural gas-fired turbines, we're going to use hydrogen-powered turbines. So essentially clean power for our own demand and also export to the grid. You know, in... in We've talked a little bit about, you know, in prior sessions about just the scale of this project. Um, this isn't just a service like Edmonton and the 1.5 million people that live around the region. This is really like a Western Canada and potentially bigger as you build it out. Absolutely. So 
with our pipeline network, we can serve the industrial heartland and wherever our pipeline gives us reach to. Yeah. But the liquid gives us reach far beyond that. We uh, distribute liquid hydrogen today all around the globe. Uh, that's easily out to 1,000 miles or more in distribution. Wow. You know, and, and again, for people that, are, that aren't familiar with this region, they may not understand or know just the scale of the industrial heartland that you just mentioned. So they've got you know, around 40 billion in capital projects already there. Uh, you know, some of the world's biggest energy companies are there, people like Nutrien are there and fertilizers. They've got a plan to build another 30 billion worth of heavy industry in that area you know, by 2030. And you know, with air products pipeline right into that, you're not only helping decarbonize you know, trucks and buses, but all kinds of industries that are really challenging you know, to, to reduce their global footprint. Uh, that's right. Um, so hydrogen today is produced at quantities of something like 100 million metric tons annually around the globe, and that's predominantly used in industrial applications and agriculture, yeah. about 50-50. So uh, there are industries immediately amenable to using decarbonized hydrogen that we're already connected into. So we can immediately de decarbonize the industrial sector. Uh, we can then leverage that into what we call other hard-to-abate sectors mm -hmm. like heavy-duty transportation, buses and trucks, trucks uh, which will run on hydrogen in, in the very, well, some are doing it now, a lot of demonstration projects going on. Uh, so we can help decarbonize the transportation sector and then also other hard to abate industrial sectors. So beyond what we do today in industries like steel and cement yeah. manufacturing. Absolutely. It's interesting, we've been having conversations with companies in, in Germany and, and some in Asia about you know, trying to decarbonize their global footprints and hydrogen is absolutely central. So when we talk about you know, your project, helping those projects, it creates this really positive knock-on effect. Absolutely. Uh, Canada is such an exciting place because it's so well positioned with its natural resources, both fossil fuel based and uh, renewable, hydroelectrics, uh, wind power, nuclear power, things like that to generate uh, low and zero carbon power, not only for domestic use, but also for export markets yeah. in these other regions that are rely on other uh, countries for their energy security. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we talked uh, earlier about liquid, and we've got a, we've got a hydrogen vehicle here. Uh, Nikola is here. Uh, Bison Transport uh, has one that's, that's a diesel hydrogen blend. Um, and, and again, we've got, we've got buses that we're buying, all these pieces to help you know, decarbonize the, uh, the transportation sector. And we actually just had some announcements about that a, a minute ago. Uh, can you just talk about you know, what liquid versus gas is, just so that, again, the average person is, you know, might understand that? Yeah, so uh, gaseous hydrogen is simply that. It, it is a gas that actually is what's used to fuel the cars and trucks uh, that are here on the showroom. But just like transportation fuels today, where we move them around as liquid, think of liquid gasoline and liquid diesel, much the same you know, it occurs with hydrogen in liquid form. We need that energy density to move it around in, in large quantities uh, and also provide storage and resiliency, just like a traditional refueling station. Yeah. And so we do this already uh, quite a bit. We have uh, over 250 executed projects in 20 countries around the globe wow. associated with mobility. So we're so excited about uh, what OEMs are doing to bring vehicles uh, to the fore uh, and happy to be able to bring that that kind of total supply chain, production, distribution, and dispensing for the vehicles. Okay. And when you look further out, so let's say you know this is built, you're looking at the future, how, how does this facility, or whether it's you know, liquid or gas, how does that fit into your larger strategy? Well, this is just the start. Uh, I, I'm so lucky to be part of an organization uh, where our growth objectives align with our sustainability vision. We have our own sustainability goals of reducing our carbon intensity one third by 2030. So then that's just the start. And so our sustainability goals really are our growth ambitions. And so just such an exciting and very fortunate place for me to be, yeah, to be I, in. Absolutely. Well, and, you know, I, I keep thinking about, and we've been talking about, and all, all the questions I've asked about how are you helping other people? You know, how are you helping heavy industry? Uh, how are you helping, you know, the you know, the, the trucking and the busing, but I mean, air products is also, you know, reducing emissions and thinking sustainably. Can you just talk about, you know, what you're doing inside your company around reducing emissions and kind of what your own footprint is? Yeah, so th th this is, uh, as, I, as I touched on, this is what we're doing uh, in trying to bring forward these new and decarbonized projects, really uh, advanced design, just like we're talking about here in Edmonton, where we're integrating uh, 
things that we haven't traditionally done with this power integration. Uh, we certainly have done that, but not with hydrogen necessarily, because yeah. that is what everyone is moving towards rapidly now. And so because of that, we can offer tremendous benefit far beyond what we've done in the past. And we're so excited about what is going on. I think you know we can't seem to go fast enough because everyone is really interested yeah. in the things we're doing and the products that we're providing. And we're excited about the collective leadership that's been shown to really drive this forward and, and to your point, try to beat this goal by 2050 with lots of time to spare. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it, it's uh, so funny that the comment about it, you know, people want it to be done faster, absolutely resonates with us. You know, we, we would be thrilled if you guys were open tomorrow, let alone, you know, doing groundbreaking <laughs> tomorrow. Um, you know, you, you probably know, and I know you helped us, we put together a, an award submission through Business Facilities Magazine uh, on deals of the year. And your project actually won for, for Canada. And what was really at the heart of that is just the transformational impact that this project, once it's complete, is going to have on, on the Edmonton region, on Western Canada, really Canada as a whole. Um, and it it's really is, I think, the first major tangible step around sustainability and just proving that we can do this and actually you know, benefit the world. So I, I want to first just say thanks. Because um, it's, you know, anytime we get an award, we're pretty thrilled. We get to kind of share it with you. We're so honored by that. I mean, uh, to be rewarded or acknowledged for the things that you're doing, we're really uh, appreciative of that. But really, the, the credit goes to kind of the collective uh, folks that we have worked with over a long period of time. Uh, the city of Edmonton, city of Strathcona County, yeah. or Strathcona County, uh, other regions, the, the government of Alberta, the federal government, we have received just tremendous support, encouragement to, to make that happen. So really, it's nice to be recognized for that, but the, the reality is this is a, a collective award for what we're doing together. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it, it's interesting too, there's been a lot of talk in Alberta, and I think in a lot of other parts of the world, about what is that transition from you know, oil and gas and other energy sources and into hydrogen and fuel cells and, you know, all these other, you know, whether it's, it's solar or wind, you know, what does that look like for the average person? What does that look like for people that work in those industries to transition? And I think hydrogen is one that the skill sets are, are pretty similar. Um, we've got, I think your project alone is going to employ something like 2,000 construction workers in the build. And those are, you know, those are going to be great jobs for probably, well, again, we want it done tomorrow, but over a couple of years. <laughs> this is a great point that you bring up because I think oftentimes we focus on, we want this, not that. Yeah. But the reality is we have to create enough space for everyone. And so to your point, the things that we're doing, these are high paid, highly technical, uh, skilled jobs, both in the operation and construction of the facilities. The skill sets are very transferable from the oil and gas sector into what we're doing today, which is great because we have to bring everyone along. We can't afford to exclude people as we go along in this energy transition. So it's just another nice place to be because we can incorporate everyone in this uh, this dream, really. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I mean, we've talked a lot, you know, across our region about the the direct, the indirect, and the induced benefits of this project. And again, you know, 2,000 immediate jobs in construction, but you know, you're looking at, at steel fabrication, you're looking at concrete pours, you're looking at carpenters, painters. There's companies across the region and really ac across Western Canada that are going to be bidding and getting work. So that, that next step and that next knock on, you know, we're going to see it in hotels, we're going to see it in homes, we're going to see it, you know, in almost every sector of the economy is going to be hit by this immediately, let alone what it unlocks in the hydrogen economy. It has such a multiplying effect and, and we haven't even touched on the hydrogen refueling stations that get exactly. built, the vehicles that get built, the car, uh, the people building all of those vehicles associated with this. And what's great about that is Canada has a tremendous amount of technical expertise in all of these areas that we can bring to bear. And, and so it just creates a tr such an uh, economic uh, vibrance uh, associated with just a single project. And th th we're hoping this is just the start. Yeah, I, we're, we're hoping that too. Um, <laughs> Can you talk just a little bit about the, the process to make the decision to invest in this region? Uh, you know, we're, while we, we think we're you know, the, the best place in the world to make this kind of investment, uh, it's super competitive. You know, we've got delegations here um, you know, from the UAE, uh, we've got people here from Australia, from, from a number of other places that are also really driving hard on hydrogen. Can you give us a bit of a sense of, of why you chose this place? Uh, 
Canada has been a, a leader in an unwavering uh, commitment to climate change objectives. And so with that uh, commitment, it's easy for us to make a decision to invest because we know that, yes, there will be twists and turns and bumps along the way, but Canada is going to be committed to achieving those net zero ambitions. And that's what we look around around the globe. And everyone's on a slightly different time horizon, but we have to get started. And we look to the most proactive geographies and regions. And uh, we're so fortunate to have worked here and to continue to be doing work here. Okay, love to hear that. Um, and I, I, for us, we talk to investors all the time. And the three things that it often comes down to is uh, predictability, transparency, and speed. And so we're really working hard to kind of push that message to, you know, to governments and others to say, like, make it clean, make it clear, make it like that path forward so that it eliminates as many of the risks as possible. Because the last thing you want to do is strand capital. Um, so, you know, it's good to hear that, that we're doing at least this part right on, on the hydrogen piece. Absolutely. Okay. Like I said, pleasure to be back here. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, yeah. nothing's really changed because it's just the same supportive uh, industry where business and government and climate objectives all come together to solve really challenging problems. Wonderful. And I know tonight uh, there's the Hydrogen Awards, the first time we've ever had Hydrogen Awards in Canada. Uh, you're up for a couple of them. Uh, not, well, maybe you personally, but Air Products certainly <laughs> is the company. Can you, um, can you talk a little bit about what you've got uh, uh, at least being nominated for? Yeah, I think our, our, our project uh, itself um, is being nominated for an award as well as our uh, liquefaction facility mm. for the mobility application. So, like I said, uh, we're excited to be honored, but, uh, you know, it, this is a collective effort. We, we couldn't do it without all of these uh, collaborating uh, bodies that help us bring this together. We're thrilled to be at this conference. It's an amazing event. I can't believe the size and scale of it. Uh, especially right after, you know, kind of the lockdown has ended. So uh, really ex excited to keep this momentum going as uh, we step forward. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad you kind of broached into that because I was going to ask you, you know, we've got, we've got people here. But it looks like we're on maybe a bit of a, must be something big happening in the main center because we've had just like packed house in here all day yesterday, you know, most of today, at least so far this morning. Um, have you been to other shows or, you know, during this pandemic? Is, is this the biggest thing you've been to? Since, the, the, uh, this is by far the largest. I've been to a couple. Uh, this is by far the largest. And in the diversity of uh, attendees is really what's encouraging yeah. that a lot, everyone has realized this is what we have to do. We're all going to work together to figure this out. And so that's reflected here in just the diversity and number of attendees and, and different companies supporting this in government as yeah. well as right in the middle of it. Yeah, perfect. And, and again, I mean, I know you know this, but it's good, I think, just to say it. Uh, you know, Rachel Smith, who's your local, you know, head of country, uh, phenomenal. The work she's doing, the leadership she's showing in this region, just, just amazing. You know, the whole team, everybody we've talked to at Air Products has been so helpful, so supportive. You know, as we try to tell the story of what's happening here, um, every time we've said, can you help us with this project we're doing with the Financial Times of London? Can you help us with this thing we're doing with Invest in Canada? Every single time it's, Absolutely. Uh, and, I, and I know that's absolutely given an absolute jam-packed schedule of things you guys are trying to do. So just wanted to say, you know, thanks so much for, for how much you're giving back to this community. Oh, well, we, we, thank you. Well, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, this is what's important to us is about that relationship that we form with the local communities where we do business. Yeah. It can't happen without everyone working together. And so we're so appreciative of the long-standing relationship we've had with everyone here and really look forward to the next announcement, maybe the next time we can talk together. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Um, so probably the next time we'll see each other, I'm hoping is going to be your groundbreaking. Uh, I know we're, we're, we're trying to get some stuff to happen, to, to make that happen, uh, including you know, letting the snow stop at some point, because <laughs> anybody who's around the Edmonton region this morning you know, woke up to some snow. And we'd like to be able to get a shovel into the ground. Uh, but we've got that coming. You know, we've got a whole bunch of things coming. Next year, we're hosting this again. We've got a plan over the next 10 years to build this into the world's largest hydrogen show. Uh, and so I think we'll, we'll probably see it every year for the next 10 at least. I, I sure hope so, and I really look forward to that. Okay, well, thanks so much, Eric. Uh, again, this has been a, a conversation we've had here uh, with Eric and Air Products about the world's largest net zero hydrogen facility that's being built right here in the Edmonton region. Uh, we're gonna take a, a quick break, and then we'll be right back with more from the Edmonton Region Hydrogen Hub stage inside the Canadian Hydrogen Convention. See you soon.